Hey, real quick before we get started, we are doing a trade-in for the IndyMark 1 and IndyMark 2 lens encoders. So if you have one of those and you want to upgrade to the new one, head on over to the link in the description and we'll give you a pretty substantial discount for sending in your old one. Okay, let's get on with it. Hey everybody, this is Andy from LowLED Virtual. Today, I'm super excited to show you the new IndyMark 3 lens encoder. This is a continuation of the popular IndyMark line that has been going strong for years now. And this new encoder is half the size and double the resolution of the IndyMark 2. If you don't know what a lens encoder is, it can be used on a virtual production stage to provide lens data when the lens itself does not. It can control the inner frustum size and focus on an LED wall, and even drive lens distortion on green screen setups. Today, I'm also going to show you the setup with our new E2E Ethernet box as well. So to get started, you want to attach a right angle USB-C cable to the encoder and secure it using the cable clamp like we're doing here. Some pro tips for you as well, you can remove the cable clamp entirely and just use a straight USB cable, or you can just use the thumb screw and use bigger USB right angle cables. So the next step is to remove the SD card that is in the E2E box and pop it into a computer. You're going to notice that there's a program and there's a JSON file, and when you open the program you can configure all of the settings for the E2E, change if it's focus at resume, change static or DHCP, and you can choose if you want to output LONA2 or OSC. When you hit save, it will automatically save it to the box so you don't need to move the file at all, and you're good to go. Go ahead and pop it back into the E2E box. Now, using your preferred rod clamp, go ahead and slide the encoder on your rods and engage the gears. Make sure that you give the lens a little bit of a spin after you tighten the rod clamp down to make sure that the gears are spinning. Plug the USB cable into the E2E. The E2E has a locking USB connector, so it may take a little bit more force than usual. And then go ahead and plug in the power. Now that flashing means that the encoder needs to be zeroed. So for focal length, put it at the widest focal length and then press the zero button and it should turn white. Now let's hop on over to Unreal. All right, now you'll need to install the LoNet 2 plugin to your project. So to do that, make a folder called Plugins inside of your project and drag the LoNet 2 plugin folder into it. Do not put it in your content folder. It will not work. Make sure you enable the plugin. And there's a couple other plugins we need to enable as well. So you want to enable the LiveLink camera and LiveLink lens plugins, as well as the LoNet 2 plugin. You'll need to restart Unreal, of course. And once you do, we'll head over to the LiveLink window and we can start to add a LoNet 2 source. Now, because LoNet 2 is multicast, you should be able to keep the IP address and port as default. And here we see a subject named the name of the camera that we just configured. Awesome. Now we need to add a LiveLink controller component to our Cine camera, and we will select that camera one subject that we just saw. I'm going to go in and I'm going to turn off all the update flags except for focal length, because that's really all that we want this one to control. And it could interfere. Unreal is better about this than it used to be, but it used to be more of a problem. Then we're also going to create a lens file right in here. So we're going to create that lens file, pick a folder to create the lens file. And I'm going to name it uh, DZO CATA 35 to 80, which is the type of lens this is. And then we also need to add a lens component and we will need to select the lens file that we just made here. Now we'll open up the lens file and you'll see some numbers at the bottom. Now, at this point, you could do a full uh, lens distortion mapping, and there are plenty of tutorials and plenty of videos online about that. But in this case, I'm just gonna show you how to do a very basic focal length mapping that is suitable for LED wall work. So first of all, with the lens still at its zero position, we're gonna hit this plus, and we're gonna enter in the focal length as engraved on the lens. And then we're literally just gonna to go to the next mark on the lens. You'll see in this window that the numbers will update and then we'll hit plus again, and then we'll add in the new value. And we just keep going mark by mark until we've completed the entire lens. Now when you're done, I can go down to the cine camera and look at the focal length property. And as I move the lens, I can actually see the focal length changing. I can see the camera zooming in and out, and I can see the data updating in the lens file. So obviously you could continue this process with multiple encoders for focus and iris if you wanted to get really crazy. Now, of course, if you are using Disguise or Pixera or Eximetry or any one of the many other pieces of software that can take this data, your workflow is gonna be a little bit different and you should consult their manual 
available for that. But the beautiful thing about the low lead hardware and software is that it is designed to be system agnostic. You can use it with anything. You're not tied to any specific tracking system or camera or lens. And even our APIs and our protocols are completely open source. So it's a super open, super flexible system for stages to build their infrastructure on top of. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments or send me an email. And if you'd like to purchase these products, links will be down below. Thank you very much.